Hi, and um, welcome to the first of the um, human environment revision sessions. So unit two, the unit two exam has three sections, the first of which is urban issues and challenges. So our key case studies for this one are Mumbai and London, but we'll get to that shortly. So a key point here is that a growing percentage of the world's population lives in urban areas. That is what this session is about. And we're gonna cover some key vocabulary that you need to have and understand so that you can then uh, look at the case studies and understand what's going on. So unit two, challenges in the human environment, urban issues and challenges, a growing percentage of the world's population lives in urban areas. Okay, so let's just have a bit of a think. Um, you need to know about global patterns of urban change. And the, the word I'm going to keep coming back to over and over again is this word change, um, because so much of this topic is about how cities are changing, whether they're in LICs or HICs. So let's just get that vocabulary sorted. HICs, high income countries. So these are countries like the UK, USA, Canada, Germany, Spain, France, Poland, so on. These are HICs. And the key thing here, if we think about where people are living, if we think about um, a pie chart of the world's population, some of those people will live in rural areas and some will live in urban areas. Areas. So let's remind ourselves what these words mean because they're absolutely crucial to the whole unit. Rural means, can you remember? Countryside or villages. So if you live in one of the villages, um, then you are in a rural area or if you're in the countryside, a farmhouse, small group of houses, you're in a rural area or up to sort of small, small rural town. Urban, these are larger, larger, more populated areas. So the classic would be a city or a mega city. That's with how many people? Mega city? 10 million plus. Um, it could be a large town. Um, and that is what an urban area is. So urban, if you think about urban music, urban fashion, um, those things tend to be associated with cities and a rural area is the countryside. So in, um, in the whole world, um, we have got a percentage of people living in um, rural areas and in urban areas. As... Um, things have changed. So when I was born, about 35% uh, of people lived in urban areas. So in the late 60s, about, this is the world now, we'll come to high income countries shortly, about 35% of the total world's population lived in urban areas and the rest lived in rural areas. And this was about 1965. By the time you get to 2015, we are over half the population now living in urban areas. So urban areas. So we've got many more people now living in urban areas. So if the percentage of people living in urban areas increases. We have a special word for that and that word is urbanisation. Okay, so let's just look at this key vocabulary. Rural areas, countryside villages, urban cities, megacities, big, big towns like Weymouth, um, 
London, Southampton, those kinds of places. In the past, in the world, remember this is the world, less than, much less than half of the people lived in urban areas. That has crept up and up and up until we've now gone over half of the world's population living in urban areas. And we have every reason to believe that that's going to get bigger. So urban areas are the future of, of, of our planet, really. It's where most people currently live and increasingly will live. If they ask you in the exam what urbanisation means, it's not the number of people increasing, it's the percentage of people living in urban areas increasing. OK, we good? Right, so the question then is how have global patterns changed? So if we come back to HICs, the high-income countries, e.g. UK, has there been a large increase in the percentage of people living in cities recently? No. Um, in fact, a large percentage already live in cities. So we had a big move to the cities. People were in the countryside and they moved to the cities to work in factories and to work in offices and, and to um, and to get the benefits of living in the city. That happened, uh, started during our industrial revolution. So we've had a big movement and we're not seeing rapid, rapid urbanisation. So a large percentage already live in cities. In fact, some people are now moving out of cities. Now, cities aren't drastically shrinking, but as people move in, others are moving out and saying, do you know what? I can live in a rural area and I can work from uh, home with uh, on the internet. I can use um, a good broadband connection and I can work from home in a nicer environment with less crime, less pollution. So HICs... Cities um, are not growing rapidly. They may be growing slowly, but they are not growing rapidly. That's the key thing. We do not see uh, large um, urbanisation. That's HICs. Okay. LICs, different, low-income countries um, and NEEs newly emerging economies and in these places we do see cities are growing rapidly in number okay in in the in population so these are growing rapidly um very very clear um so the cities here are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger um why is that happening it's happening for two reasons so if you have a city Let's take somewhere like Mumbai in India. Um, why is this population going up? It's going up for two reasons. Number one, natural increase. And if you remember that population, it means birth rates are higher, greater than death rates. So as people are having children, the number increases, more babies and the population gets bigger and the city grows. But in, as well as that, and very importantly, you've got people currently living in villages in India. And these are people who might be working in farming and they might be working um, on, and they might be on low incomes or even subsistence farming. And so these people currently in villages, what do we call areas? The countryside villages, these are rural areas. And these people are living often in poverty and maybe living without um, good services. Uh, and increasingly they may be experiencing trouble with climate and um crops not being reliable so these people are moving into the city and moving in and there are pull factors pulling them in and the pull factors are 
pulling them in, what might they be? They're the opposite to the push factors. So we're seeing things like social pull factors, such as education, or better education than they may be able to access in the villages, better healthcare than they can currently access in the villages, um, there may be clean water supply, and these are social pull factors. And in addition to that, let's put it in a different colour, we may also be seeing economic pull factors, better paid jobs. So don't just put jobs, um, they're better paid, be a little bit more, um, uh, they're a little bit clearer. So we've got economic, better paid jobs, jobs in factories, jobs in offices, um, and if if you know if you're willing to work, you will find work. Um, so these people are moving in, and again, that expands the population. So we have rural, urban migration. So migration is people moving from one area to another. Rural urban migration into Mumbai. So this city, or cities like it, Jakarta, Nairobi wherever they are around the world, we've got people moving in from villages, not from different countries, from villages in the same country, going to the city, looking for better paid jobs, education, better health care, clean water. Maybe they're going to stay with family, live with family. And the people moving in often, maybe in their early 20s, and these are people maybe who are therefore um, of childbearing age and this also will feed into this population growing. So just to review to re review that, HICs, cities are not growing rapidly. People do move in, but they also move out. We already had a big move. LICs and NEEs, such as India, Mumbai, people are moving from the villages into the cities, looking for better paid jobs, looking for education, better health care, better opportunities for the future. Keywords, pull factors, pulling you in. Push factors, push you away. So they'll often be an opposite. Poverty, better paid jobs. Have yourself some examples. We keep talking about India and we're going to talk about Mumbai, so let's stick with that, but it would be true in many, many different countries. So where are we seeing most new megacities? So most new megacities are in Southeast Asia, uh, Africa, have that in mind. Okay, those are some key points that you need to know about the fact that a growing percentage of the world's population are living in urban areas and much of that growth it's happening in LICs and NEEs.